you are a photographer. Uh, in what way do you think it differs how photos can talk to us rather than words? Yeah, so I am a photographer and I run a charity called Project Pressure where we visualize climate change. And I also have a degree in environmental science. So I have more hats than I've got hair, so to say. But the way that, I don't think it's just photography. Photography is one thing, but if we, if we um, let's call it art. If we call art as a general thing, I think art has a big role to play in communication in the way that art can hit some emotional tones where science is hard facts, it's very rational, and um, it doesn't, a lot of people don't relate to it. So if art can bridge that gap and fill it and make it interesting, then we can get people to engage with climate change and other issues. And uh, that's why I think art is very important. Is it different between different sorts of arts, I think? Uh, you mean different art forms? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, um, I don't know. I, different, art fo- different art forms have different... Um, no, let's do this differently. Um, different art forms have different qualities. If you look at uh, the visual art and two-dimensional visual art, such as photography, painting, drawing, and so on, it's a snapshot in time. If you can tell a story that is maybe very broad, very complex in one frame, that's a very, very skillful way of communicating. Whereas, let's say, if you're working with film, you have music, you have a timeline, you can build different momentums and you can hit different you can hit people emotionally in different ways. So I think different art forms definitely have different roles and different uh, emotional uh, skills and values that people appreciate. And I don't think one is superior to another. Um, I think all art is very valuable if it's quality. Um, where does it come from, your interest in uh, climate change? Um, my interest in climate change uh, comes from I love the cold. I um, grew up playing ice hockey um, in Denmark, which is not a great ice hockey nation, but I loved winter sports and I used to skate in winter outside, ski, etc. etc. I wear shorts most of the year and at some point in 2008 I realized that something was happening and this was not good. So I have an interest in the outdoors and I guess a big love for the outdoors and I think based on that came an interest in, um, in, in climate change. Uh, both my parents are scientists in uh, different areas. My, my dad uh, was a vet and my mom did forensic science. But I've always had a very big interest in science and scientifically led projects and I thought they were very interesting. And basically for the great thing about photography is you can combine your hobbies and make it into a job. So if you like cats, you photograph cats. If you have a passion for the environment, you create environmental projects that uh, we that um, work in that realm. You have traveled around the world taking these amazing pictures, but in what way have you come across the effects of global warming on your journeys? So Project Pressure is a combination of 13 different artists that we commissioned to create a response to climate change. Climate change is complex, it's difficult to visualize, and there's a lot of noise in that spectrum and has definitely, in the, in the, definitely been very uh, communicated unclearly and with a lot of uncertainty. So we try to find a niche and something that communicated very clearly climate change and nothing else. Wildfires, flooding, uh, other climate related, related events, events are also part of the weather systems and as such are not 100% attributed to climate change. Glacier recession can be attributed to climate change uh, and primarily global warming, but also precipitation patterns. So we chose to uh, visualize climate change using glaciers and we've conducted uh, expeditions around the world, all climate offset, and um, created uh, artworks that uh, can engage people hopefully. So it deals with anything from like grand satellite images of, of the ice sheet of Antarctica to tiny, tiny bit, uh, small things that are happening in, in Nepal and some of the bacteria that we are investigating there. So we look at things from, uh, from many different perspectives where, through the views, f- through the eyes of many different artists. These journeys, what effects did they have on you? Oh. 
when you're next to that much ice, uh, you feel very humble. You feel very significant, insignificant. Mm -hmm. In particularly, let's say, being on the Greenland ice sheet is incredibly humbling. And then yet when you realize the effects that we as humans are having, it's, it's absolutely devastating. Uh, it's not something you can forgive humanity that we're destroying this. It, it's, it's sad. And uh, I know uh, glaciers are inanimate objects, as in they're, you know, ice, primarily. Snow as well, a bit of rock, a bit of dust, whatever. Uh, but they, uh, they impact me mostly. Um, and of course, you, you, you have a lot of other effects happening with climate change. But I, I'm sad when I see the effects in that way, because I understand how consequential it is and, and why it's happening. And I guess it's because I understand the science behind it. Um, so for me, it's, it's, a very, it's a very impactful and moving experience. When, uh, when people watch your photos and your projects, what do you want them to feel? When people look at the artworks in Project Pressure, and it has to be said, the 13 artists that we uh, have commissioned to create artworks has been put together in a traveling exhibition called Meltdown that will premiere this summer uh, in the Natural History Museum in Vienna, and then it's going to be a traveling exhibition. What we want from that is not necessarily, we don't want to dictate what people should feel. I think that's the great thing with art, is that you can't say, you can't predict how people should feel, but we can have some guidelines to the artist how we would like them to communicate or what we would like them to communicate about. All the artists in Project Pressa has been collaborating with uh, scientists, so we know there's a scientific value as, as well as uh, artistic uh, qualities to the artworks. And uh, I think that's, that's, the, that's the key thing, that we, we create a, a forum, a platform, a touch point, something that's exciting, engaging for people to engage with climate change. Then we want them to look at the science behind it. We want them to understand the urgency of what's happening and think about maybe their own lifestyle, but also how they need to activate themselves in, in, in this uh, debate. And here we don't have time, uh, other platforms and just making your voice heard is, is crucial. We, we, we need to be noisy and we need to, uh, climate change shouldn't be, uh, it should not be something for um, a minority it should be the majority that are just like deal with it, and then once we've had that shift, things will be on as on as unacceptable. You know, uh, uh, emitting CO two should not be more any more acceptable than smoking in in, in a child's bedroom. Uh, but we need to make that mental shift that this is unacceptable, and it's not okay, and and that can't happen fast enough. What do you think, uh, art? What, what kind of role does art have in solving this crisis? I think we have uh, the, 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 the solution of the, no, the role that art can play in the crisis is that we have a, a whole lot of uh, a very complex um, system of communication, of science and the public, uh, scientists, politicians, individuals, uh, all the big CO2 emitters and uh, you know a lot of companies are implicit in this. So in kind of let's say deconstructing that big mess art can be a very good way to engage people in, in dealing with this and I think if, if art is concise if it's precise it can cut through the noise and allow people to hear a voice and see something that they can actually understand and, and don't feel overwhelmed by. So I think that's the role of art. I think the role of art is to communicate clearly and precisely in an engaging way, and I th it's as simple as that, but that is very difficult. Finally then, how would you summarize this day? Today? Um, it's been sunny, it's Earth Day 2019. Earth Day was uh, originally an idea from 1967, so the first Earth Day was in, in 1970, on the 21st of April. It was supposed to be the first day of spring in the Northern Hemisphere. And it was probably back then, and now it's not. It's been spring for a while. So we are, what, what Earth Day today made me think about is that climate change is happening. It's already happening. 
it's not a linear process, it's accelerating. The more CO2 we pump in, the more it's accelerating, and we're way beyond what's acceptable. And we need to have very drastic and radical and exponential solutions to this problem. And that's what today made me think about. Do you think we can do it? I hope so. Uh, I think uh, we are building momentum, and I think there's a lot of things happening. I think there's a lot of attitude changing, but it's not enough to uh, talk about uh, bits and bobs and small little, it's not small change we need, we need systemic change. But systemic change starts with the individual, it starts with the individual mindset, and uh, we're on our way.